Hit it. So this is a project that I've been working on for several months and I've actually wanted to build for several years. So it really involved a lot of different technologies and things that I've never worked with. I had to buy a welder, a 3D printer, Raspberry Pi, PPTG, PLA, ABS, Coral Edge TPU, a webcam, a stepper motor, stepper motor driver, buy this TV, buy a TV wall mounting bracket, I had to buy some electronic parts, buy a soldering iron, and lots more little things that I just didn't have or never used before. Without further ado, let's dive into the process of how I was able to build my super smart, smart TV picture frame wall thing. Like every good parent, I have 5 million photos of all of my kids. And no one ever sees them, so I want to be able to display them on a wall. The problem is with a picture, you have to print that out every time. So the obvious solution here is to put a display instead of a picture frame, which works great. Now the only problem with this is that when you're displaying photos in a landscape orientation, everything looks great and wonderful. But when you have a photo come up that's in a portrait orientation, it really shrinks it down and you get these awful black bars at the side. And this is clearly unacceptable. So the solution to this problem is to, of course, rotate the entire display. And then you can get those nice portrait photographs that come up in a lovely full screen orientation. And this is wonderful and everyone is happy. Now, one of the challenges here is that when you traditionally have a layout of a t television, they are in what's known as 16 by 9 aspect ratio, meaning 16 units across and 90 units up and down. Well, most digital cameras tend to take photos that are around more in the 16 by 11 range, which means they kind of look a little bit more like this in a box. Now, one solution to this problem would be, of course, just to build in some easy borders around the TV so that you get a little bit of an effect like this. That way I can have full perfect 16 by 11 and I just sort of fake it by covering part of my TV with the actual border. Now what I ended up doing is I still have images that are 16 by 11 and instead I just scale the image up and then crop out the top and bottom half so that I end up with a photo that fits in my screen. In Mark II version I may end up actually building a frame around my TV. So my first attempt here, I had to model out here a representation of the bearing bracket. And after I had this, I went ahead and created a model on top of that that was going to essentially mate right on top of this. And I'd be able to bolt this down. And this, of course, has my grooves in here. And this is sort of the final assembly all complete here. You can see that then I would attach a belt from this drive over here to this uh, sort of pulley system. And that's what would essentially rotate and drive my entire system. So in the first go around, I actually did not have a 3D printer. So I got this idea of just getting some of this uh, little sort of glue here. This is like the JB Weld type of stuff and essentially creating a bit of a mold. So I spread this around my little flange here, got some oil and then just kind of wrapped this belt around, let it dry overnight and to create sort of the uh, female end of the gear here. And this is me peeling it off. It actually worked really, really well. This gear just ended up not working for me and I decided to get a 3D printer uh, next. So here's just a little quick build montage. You can see I'm just kind of in the shop here, cutting out my little brackets that I modeled up, making marks, doing some holes, drilling away, and just kind of building up the little bracket. This first version of the bracket you'll see here that I'm making a second, I ended up not going with. Uh, it worked okay, but not quite for my needs. Here's a 3D printer doing a little bit of printing and uh, just kind of assembling everything together here. The main issue I ran into with this first version was that I couldn't quite get the belt tensioner tight enough uh, with assembling it to drive the entire weight of the TV. You can kind of see here how it's looking. So it works, uh, but it's just not quite strong enough. All right, so for my third test, I knew I had to do a worm gear. So this is my first 3D model of the first worm gear I tried. And it actually worked really well. Uh, you can see here, here's the worm gear, and then here's how it fits sort of on top of this flange. So you can kind of see it just goes down like that. All right, so I've got this rigged up here. This is my 3D printed worm gear. This is test number one, maiden voyage to see if it will uh, turn. Ready, set, go. Yeah, 
kind of turns. And it worked well, but uh, I knew I actually had to had to have a little bit beefier of a worm drive after some initial tests that I did with this one. So I ended up designing my second one, which looks like this. So here's the second worm gear. You can see it's much larger, has much larger teeth, and more importantly, it has a much bigger drive head here. So I ended up using this worm gear, and then I built this little housing sort of as a gear box to go around my gear so that I would be able to sort of stabilize it inside of here. So this particular gear box mounts down on the flange the same way the other one does, but it's a 60 to one reduction. So this is the final 3D model that I then 3D printed again, and this one worked beautifully as you'll see here in a second. Oh, check that out. Oh yeah. Right, here's my first ever attempt at soldering. This is actually a little circuit that has some hardwired fail safes so the TV can't rotate left to right unless it's already in a left to right position. All right, moment of truth. First rotation test on the new setup, new worm gear. Cross your fingers that it doesn't break off the wall. Hit it. Oh, oh shoot. So as you can see there, it worked, but the motor was rotating way too fast. And the problem is that it just started all at the same speed and it ended all at the same speed. So when it reached its sort of vertical position, it would sort of bounce and lock in place and create sort of this jarring issue. So luckily for me, I married somebody who is much smarter than me. And my wife helped me with some of the math on coming up with some what's known as ramp code in order to make it so the motor slowly starts and then ramps up to a constant speed and then slowly stops and then slowly rotates back down. So the final version you'll see here in a second actually takes about 30 seconds to do a full rotation. It's nice and slow and smooth and there's no sudden jar and the TV won't rip off the wall. So let's take a look. So the last thing I wanted to demo for you was that this TV is actually a little bit more smart than just the rotation. So you'll see up here at the top, there's actually that mounted webcam that I talked about in the beginning. And what that's doing is, this is just a bit of a teaser as I'm going to be releasing this in an upcoming video, but this webcam is tracking the viewer in real time. And it actually does facial recognition tracking. And wherever you move across the room, this photograph here, I've got my family photo up here, it will actually track you and move in a parallax 3D space. So this photograph here is actually split into several different layers. I did that graphics work inside of a Photoshop and uh, you'll see what happens here. So I'm just gonna do a little quick demo again. This is gonna come up in a previous or in a future tutorial, but you can see as I come over here, once the camera locks onto my face, you'll notice that this screen is gonna switch. So as I come over to this position right here, notice how everything just kind of shifted down and to the right. And I'll kind of move over here to the left and the camera's gonna grab my face over on this side and you'll see that it's quickly gonna shift down over this way. So you can kind of see that moving back and forth as it locks onto my face and you can kind of see the parallax effect. And it also does track me up and down. So you can subtly see that effect, but it will track you around the room and automatically sort of follow you in this 3D parallax. Now the one thing yet I've done yet to do on this is the this entire system is running on a Raspberry Pi computer. And the face tracking, the live face tracking runs a little bit slow on the Raspberry Pi. In my tests on my computer, it tracks at around 40 frames a second, where on this little teeny tiny Raspberry Pi computer, I'm getting around four frames per second. That's why I actually had to buy this Coral Edge TPU unit. So that, again, that's gonna be coming up in the future so I can get that to track in real time. Uh, what I didn't cover in this video was the software that runs this entire process. So the Raspberry Pi computer is the computer that's running the slideshow. It's also doing the automatic detection with a Node.js JavaScript server. So when a photograph rotates into landscape or portrait, it automatically detects that and rotates the entire TV via my electronic gear and stepper motor in the back. And what happens here, this is a little bit crazy, 
but all of my photographs are stored on my computer, which is a Macintosh computer. Now the way this system actually works is you can actually load on a bunch of photographs onto a thumb drive, a USB thumb drive, and plug that into the Raspberry Pi and it'll automatically play the slideshow of your photos based on the thumb drive. Uh, but for my instance, I sort of wanted to get random photos from my five jillion photos I have on my computer. So I had to write a little program that connects to Apple's photos program, downloads 50 random photos each night at midnight, takes those photos, wirelessly transfers them to the Raspberry Pi via Wi-Fi, and the Raspberry Pi will pick those up in the, photo, in the folder and then automatically start rotating through the new photographs each day. Again, I can set the duration of the photos for however long I want, so I think right now I have it set to every five minutes or something like that, a new photo pops up. Something, I uh, can set it to 20 minutes or one hour. You can do all sorts of things like that. Uh, another feature that I haven't yet experimented with is video. So it definitely has the possibility of being able to load up videos and play those as well on autoplay. Anyway, I hope you've liked this fun little exercise. This is by far the most challenging and expensive project I've taken on. It's taken me several months. Give it a thumbs up, like, share it with all your friends. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.